that like uh, the guys who have the microphones to be ready to pass them around. We've interacted with our uh, visitors, and now we want to hear from you. Your reactions, comments, uh, questions, connections, and so on. So I think what I'll do, I'll be taking a round of like three or four questions, then we respond to them, and then we can do the next round. So if you have a comment or question, you can lift up your hand and the microphone will find you, and then you can engage with our visitors. So just lift up your hand if you have a comment or question. And as you're thinking about your comment or question, maybe what Professor Lin tell you is that this book, Pan-African Connections, actually she's the author, uh, together with uh, a few other, one other colleague, I think. Okay, fine. So maybe I'll start us off with just one or two questions or reflections. And maybe this is to uh, Professor Mukoma. And um, when I look at this hall, I can see many upcoming writers. Uh, the question of ask the light of the Canal uh, Safar Prize, which will be held on Friday. Should people be writing? Today, should young people be writing for competitions, or uh, there should be some other kind of uh, motivation to this? Um, okay, I'll give you guys homework. No, I'm not as a teacher. I'll give you guys homework. Find this essay and put it online. It's called The Art of Finding. The Art of Finding by Linda Brown. By the way, just Google the art of finding, right? Um, it, 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 it's a very short essay, two pages or so, but, 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 but in that essay she talks about um, where are you write from, right? No, 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 okay. There's a question of who, who are you writing for? But there's also the important question of where are you writing from, right? So in that essay she talks about how uh, we write from um, experiences, our personal experiences, Personal experiences, it could be trauma, it could be something beautiful as well. Right? And that becomes that becomes um, what she calls a resonant resource, but it becomes something beautiful that you work with. Right? So for me, for me as a writer, really, um, I talk about my grandmother and I'm going to to see her and she tells me these stories and so on and so forth. But, but, to, but to get to her place, I think I'm talking about the mood and like you know all right? But but to get to her place. Um, I had to go through, through this here, the hills and valleys, right? That turned out, but it turned out, uh, they were beautiful getting there, right? But it turned out, um, when the British colonized Kenya, in order to separate the Mau Mau from the, um, from, from the people, right? They dug these trenches, they, they, they dug these trenches of the history that they spikes in it, right? But I think it's what I was saying. I would say that's where I write from. I write from that, from that thing of, of, of just taking that walk, just taking that walk to go see my grandmother, right? But, but also I'm walking through history, right? Okay, so should you write for competitions? Definitely, really, you know. If you, you should enter as, as many competitions as possible, you should um, write for newspapers, you should write for for journals, you should, you should, like in fact, you should write a novel, write, write a novel, write your book of poetry and so on and so forth, right? Um, but by the question of where are you writing from? Where are you writing from? That's the question you, that you have to answer to yourself, right? For yourself. And indeed, what one wants to start thinking about it that way, then also you have your stories to tell, right? Okay, okay, so I'm going to switch a little bit, okay, so. Um, okay, I don't know if you, can, if you know Sonia Sanchez. Right? She's, a, she's a black American poet, um, you know, who, who grew up around the time of Malcolm X, you know, and Martin Luther King and so on, and, and, and those people, right? Um, but there was a time I was talking with her, and she said that, um, that we are all, there's nothing more unique than, than yourself, right? In, in, in that sense, but, but she put it in the sense of your DNA, nobody else has your DNA, right? Your DNA is you as right? like nobody else like the, the most original thing is you if that makes sense right so so, yeah, so right from there right, 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 right from your dna right from 
dialect from who you are. Because ultimately, <coughs> they are the most unique thing. Right? So you said, you said, you said yes, so enter competitions, uh, ranking Israeli, you know, and enter, enter um, the Israeli praise, and so on and so forth. But really, think about those questions as well. Where are you ranking from? The Terry has shared some questions with me, but I want to invite the students to just ask the question themselves. I can see there's a question from Ziki. So, good afternoon. My name is Ziki. I'm a student. Uh, okay. I'm a student. 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 I'm a
born children, I don't have to watch them be sold into slavery. But I work hard as a man, and I work hard, and I eat as well. But look at me, I'm an older woman, right? So she was one of the first people that black feminists began to look to, to have a redefinition of what those interests were that black women would control of. So most black feminists then are saying that their issues are not just about their, their sexuality or their bodies, but it's about race, it's about their gender, it's about their class, it's about their status in the world. And of course, definitely the fact of wanting to enhance the rights of all people around them, not just themselves. And this is one of the key differences between Western feminism and black feminism, that it's not just only about black women's interests, but it's the whole community, definitely the right to motherhood, the right to take care of their children and have their children go to good schools and be educated, the right to share the world's resources and define how those resources are spent and shared. And what I brought in this book, and I'm going to give some, um, some, of, you, some of the bookmarks, is that those rights are some of those rights that women who run for office, and some of you should, um, locally or nationally or regionally, uh, or run for whatever, you know, take on whatever leadership you need to, that those rights are the same rights that everybody in the world wants, and they should not be just the rights that go to one community, that is white men or white women or black men, but everybody should share favorably in the world's resources. So that's a kind of summary kind of essay <laughs> on the topic that I can give you now. Thank you, Prof. Um, and now there's an incentive even to ask me a question. You ask the question, you get a bookmark. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to the audience, Amy, any other person who would like to ask a question? So there's number one, number two, and number three. So we can pass the mic to one, two, three, then we'll go another round. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Harvard. And my question was, you mentioned that you came from Congo and I um, think that you are from Caribbean. And you said that, uh, that and we, we learned that for you most of the people there is something which we call it because of the culture and the way uh, the way now when you go to America, you feel at home when you are in America or you feel that you should be able to go to home in America. And finally, in Africa, we do learn about the Afro American literature. And uh, what about in America? Do you learn African literature? Thank you. Uh, before you go for that, the second person, let's go to the second question, then the third, then we can come back to the responses. Thank you. Okay, my name is Brenda, a year student taking English and literature. My question is like this. During the colonial period, we have learned in literature that most of the Africans, especially those in the diaspora, were facing some of the major challenges which include slavery. And in beloved, by Tony Morrison, he suggests that Afro-Americans Afro are still being affected by the ghost of slavery. We would request to inquire what our guests think about this. Thank you. Last question, number three. Just lift up your hand and then pass the mic. Okay. Okay, my name is Liz. Um, I'm a first year in English here. And I'd like to ask um, you've talked about Tiger Arm that is um, now getting the Europeans out of our nation. And you've seen a lot of black activism throughout the years. I'd like to ask the guests, do you think um, it's, it's actually working? Do we have um, uh, black minds being decolonized? Do we have um, the equality we've been fighting for for so long? Is there actually progress? And in the years to come, will there be a difference um, at the board? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and I think the story first one we has said is asking after all this effort, writing, speaking, and so on, finally 
are we being colonized or the project, uh, your estimation, how is the project being along? Okay, so I think we can take, we can answer any of those respond to any of the questions. So, so right. I think some of the questions, you know, because also now, you know, I didn't take the question that, because also that's how we grow, right, as professors as well, right? we grow from questions, because now I'm thinking about the, the difficult questions really. <laughs> Alright, okay, so, okay. Okay, the first question, okay, what is home? Um, what do I call home? Right? So I grew up in Lugu, and like I said, I went to Tiwadi, and then also went to Kenya, and Luga High School, you know, so. Uh, but, but I've been in the US now, I went to the US in 1990, but that's why I was, but I was born in the US in 1991. Okay, so I would say really, maybe, I'm done with 53, like I said, right? If you know it's a trivial question, it's something I struggle with. Okay, what is home? So I'll answer it in several ways. One is, for example, when I'm coming, when, when I'm coming to Kenya, I'm very close to you, so I say, that I'm going home, right? Then when I'm returning, when I'm, when I'm going back to the US, they say, that's all I'm like I'm just going home. You know, so, but, 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 of, of multiple homes, it was a struggle, right? But part of it is also saying that the world is ours, right? This, this world is ours, right? And you can be at home here, you can be at home there. But, but, then what, but, once, you, but once you say that, then what's your responsibility to this place that you're calling home, right? So, and for me, do I have, do I, do I have answer that question to, to, to tell the truth, you know, about the, the, the different homes, right? So, um, I was, I was here in November, and this was during the um, during the, uh, the, public, the, the protests, right? The, the protests. Um, and, and on that day, I ended up in the mood, right? I was saying that my son's prayer, they said, you know, I need to go to the moon because this place I go to where I live in Gold Beach. So, 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 so some of the answers really are that simple, right? I, I wanted to have some Gold Beach in this place I used to go to when I was growing up called Wakari, right? You know, but getting there, uh, was like they would they would be in the mood like everything had changed, right? It was just quiet. Something that something I hadn't seen uh, until something I hadn't seen since 1982 when the when the coup happened, right? Okay, just about the 1982 coup, right? The, so you know the same sort of quietness, you know the same sort of quietness where everything is even the matter to do what I mean. Nobody was I mean okay, you get what yes, you know what I mean, right? So that sort of quietness, but right? we ended up in the room, I uh, ended up at Wakari, had a task that has involved me, right? So I was at home, right? <laughs> you know, so all the, 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 the getting, getting back to the US, then you have to be responsible, as much as one can be responsible, um, to talk about the oppression there, right? Now, okay, there, 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 there's one thing you do wrong for those of us coming, coming from Kenya who are up in the US. And one is to, to, to say or to tell our children or uh, that uh, we're not we're not black we're not black American, right? Um, that that um, in fact most parents will tell their children to stay away from the, from black Americans, right? Because because also we go there with the colonial mentality, right? So if it was your question, okay, where is home? Home, home can be anywhere, but I think when you call home, you have, you have a responsibility for it. Right. What's that? Right. What's that? What's that rest of responsibility? You can answer it in your own way. You can become the best doctor. You can become, you can become the best technician. You can, you can become, you know, it, it, yeah. You can answer it. You can answer it politically, and so on and so forth. But, but really, we have responsibilities. Why in the call home? Right. Um, okay. Ghost well, of slavery. That is very much the second question. Ghost of slavery. Okay. 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 You know, okay. Then let me answer it this way. So you guys know to do that you to do that Alright, so I had this little bit in like a few years ago at least. So when I was growing up, if I misbehaved, which was often I should have, you know, my mother or whoever was was me to tell me, if you do that again, we'll send you to Mutito Atei. So but the reason so far we do that means uh, uh the, 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 the forest, the forest of vultures. Right. Vulture, you, you know vultures, right? The, the reason it's called that is because um, uh, when, when slaves were being taken to, to Mombasa, right? Uh, 
they don't go to the, they don't build the centers, those that are sick three or whatever, you know, misbehaving and so on and so forth, who will be left at Montito are they? The, the delivery the name comes from the, the vultures, the vultures that will suckle, right? Um, if they get people, well, getting ready to eat, the, the, you know, to eat the people that will be left behind, right? So the goes of slavery, um, of course, in the US, the, the, the goes of slavery are there, right? Um, but so do we, so do we as well as Africans, right? We also have those goes of slavery. Uh, okay, I, I guess we have time. Maybe. <laughs> But now, because now I'll tell you the story of going to, uh, going to Ghana, right? because the, the, the book I've been working on uh, is actually on the accent question of slavery. Right? Um, but I ended up in this little town in Ghana called Keta. Right? Um, Keta was one of the places where slaves were being taken from. And, and the reason why I ended up there is because my auntie, uh, a book of heaven, ready to issue my auntie, was uh, all those children and uh, each shoes. Uh, she talks about that, she talks about that space. But I think that at Keta, that's where slaves were being taken from. Right? And uh, generations after generation after generation, um, the trauma, the, tra the, the, the trauma of, of, of those who were being taken uh, is still there. Right? In the same way, we, okay, we can talk about the ghost of slavery, we can also talk about the ghost of colonialism here. Right? Uh, in the same way, why you know, when you talk to your grandparents, you know, and so on, they don't have, they don't have some silences, right? Not some silences because of all the things they went through. So, in okay, the course of slavery, yes, yeah, they are, they are, they are in the U.S. But so we have them, right? And it's something we need to talk about. Um, okay, I, I, I think it's changing ah, when it comes to activism. I mean, we are, yeah, I was gonna say we are here. Right? I mean, the you guys are here, you know, so. <laughs> Yeah, so, 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 so to change, to change has brought us here, right? Change has brought us here. Um, but again, as I said when I was talking earlier, but if you don't have an extended awareness of your history, and, and, this, and this is your duty, really, this is a duty you guys should take. This is your duty uh, to learn your history. You can interpret it in your own way, right? But, um, but so, yes, yeah, so, so things are changing. But, uh, but, but unless you know that history, then really, uh, to, to, to be quite blunt, you end up with, 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 with uh, William Ruto. In the same way, in the, in the 60s, we ended up with Kenyatta, right? Now, we, we, we can say Kenyatta betrayed Mao Mao, right? In the same way, we ended up with Moi. In the same way, we ended up with Uru. Okay, so Uru Kenyatta, you know, he owns, or his family owns, 565,000 acres of land. 565 acres of land. 565,000. Acres of land, right? So then, I, you know, how, how, how do we vote for him, right? If you don't have land, <laughs> what, what, what we think is going to say, well, uh, I'll give you an acre tomorrow, right? So, 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 so we, we, have, we have a duty, then, then more for you guys, you really have a duty uh, to learn your history. So, yes, things are changing, but, um, <laughs> but, but it will say the same unless uh, you're working from. A lot of memory. Yeah. Um, very poor people like me from born in the Caribbean, full of most of the Africans who were taken as enslaved people from all across. We learned that first people saw it only as West Africa, but it was actually the whole continent. So uh, you want to move people across from place to place and so on. So for those Africans who moved to the Americas, home was Africa. Isn't that interesting? So this is why when you meet most people from the diaspora, they still think of Africa as home. And this actually, this feeling, which comes from that separation, uh, you will find it in this little way, find it all across South America when you run into Africans who are living there the logic of Africa as home. But it's a kind of symbolic home sometimes. It's a way of recreating home. It's a way of trying to recapture some sense of humanity in terms of who they are. So Africa as home is really fundamental to diaspora logic. However, a lot of times when diasporans come to Africa, they don't end up feeling at home because they put their, sometimes their own reasons, they may be very Americanized, or they may have prejudicial views of what they will meet. 
uh, or they may never make the proper connections. And some of them have written about that. But you also have a huge body of poetry about Africans writing about Africa as homeland. So this logic of Africa as homeland would drive a number of political movements, including major ones from a man named Marcus Garvey, who, that's another name to write on if you don't know Marcus Garvey, um, who was from Jamaica and was actually trying to find ways to build um, maritime connections to bring back people back here. And so there was always then, related to that, a twin discussion. So one discussion was saying we need to go back to Africa, right? Um, physically, actually going back and finding a place to live. And this actually drove the creation of certain places like Liberia, one room in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and some other places. But you would also find even here, and I definitely times in here, people from Rastafari communities who've actually physically made the journey and moved back here and live here. Ethiopia, there's a whole community in Ethiopia called Shashamani, um, with Rastafari who were given land by Haile Selassie to live there and have a whole community there, married, they have children, they have farms and so on, schools. So this this book of returning to Africa as home is the drive, one of the driving features of Pan-Africanism. But it's also, as I want to suggest, the tension, because there are enough people who also argue that they've given so much labor to building America that this is their home and they deserve to have rights there as well. So I think it's out of that complexity then that you get that sense of where home is. So for us, definitely for people who are from the Caribbean, the logic of home is definitely multiple. We are the original people who have that sense of wherever I live, this is my home, you know. So we feel then that we agree with my colleague here that we, wherever we live, we have to contribute, we have to live, we have to not just be like the Europeans, just cultivating the soil for profit, um, but also to create livable lives and make those lives have meaning. Um, and so it's, a, it's an ongoing issue, keep that in mind. So each generation is always faced with dealing with that. So for example, following the rise of President Trump, there are many African Americans who are like, we have to find somewhere else to go, we can't live here, we go back. Um, and every now and then there are certain movements which happen, which precipitate Africans in the Americas trying to figure out should they come back. And now keep in mind the African Union, which is the, supposedly the organizing body of all the African states, after they completed the liberation of all the African countries from colonialism ending with South Africa, they turned to creating the African Union with the logic then of also building into it something called the African diaspora as another state that if you will, or region of the African Union. So if you go on the African Union website, you should find that information. And the logic of what that was that Africans in the diaspora have a right because they were shipped, they didn't plan to go, you know, they were but they were taken by force, they didn't have a passport, they never left with legal papers. So they actually have a right if they want to to come back and live on the continent. And some states, I'm not sure how far Kenya has gone with that, but some key states like Ghana have created rights of a vote which say that Africans in the diaspora have a right to return if they want to. And of course, many people don't want to. So the return home is symbolic, it's mental. This is what I meant about, you know, the Rastafari, emancipate your mind from mental slavery, that but ourselves can free our mind. It's mental, it's physical if you want to, it's cultural, you know, like you want to use and employ the traditions and cultures of Africa. Uh, it's spiritual. There are many African religious movements across the Americas which recreate African cultural traditions in those places. It's aesthetic, you know, how people dress, how they look, how they, whatever they use in terms of African created um, fashion or style or whatever. And it's also the sense of 
you know, finding a way to understand how one is in the world as a human subject. And that to me is probably the, the most important one. How one lives in the world as a full human being without being oppressed and with also, also oppressing other people. That to me has to be fundamental wherever we are. So I think that probably combines a lot of the other pieces like the ghost of slavery and the other pieces. Thank you. Thank you for that. I think you've even answered a couple of questions which uh, would have been forthcoming. I think in the interest of time, we'll just take two last questions and then um, we can move on to the next step. So I think uh, maybe for the sake of gender parity, let's have number one and number two. Yeah, can pass the mic to them. You can stand, okay. Um, my first question goes to Professor Mokoma. Uh, you say that you've been traveling in Ghana, Jamaica, trying to figure out what black is. According to, can you, according to your research, can you tell us what black is? My second question is, uh, in America, as in, mostly we Africans, we, we go through racism. You being in America, I know, being writing books, I know there are some challenges that come from there. Can you maybe tell us the, how you face those racism? Like for example, in the period of Floyd, we see that he was being tortured because of being a black. So you being there, obviously there are some challenges that you go through in terms of producing your books and the challenges that you face there. How do you come from it? And then the third... No, uh, you take two, we can't have... <laughs> Yeah, uh, thank you. Right. Number two, yes, you can pass the mic. Yeah, in that time, my name is Sabu Ujo, the communication university. Uh, I have a question. Uh, in my studies, I like Spain, Germany, England, there are city footballers, there are monkey chants in England, black footballers are. Yeah, there are no prosecutions taken against those individuals. So, are, are Western countries doing enough to try and meet racism? Yeah, I think the questions are a bit connected. What is black? Do you have against racism? And what's being done is around racism, I think, in a nutshell. Yeah, so, 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 right? What, what is racism? And how is it, have I experienced it, right? Um, so, it's a, it's a question I wrestle with, right? It's a question I'm dealing with, actually, as we speak, right? Um, and, and, and the question I had for myself was, at what point did I think I was black? At what point did I become black? And in trying to answer that question, uh, then I had to think about Kenya, right? You know, because really this is where I'm from anyway, right? Um, and I started thinking about ethnicity, ethnicity or tribalism, right? You know, so uh, I'll tell you this story. There was a time um, when I was growing up, so when, you know, when I was young, uh, again, this is in Uhuru. Uh, there was an Asian family that, uh, that, that got slaughtered, right? You know, uh, and, 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 and what, what I think about now is the attitude we had, right? This is in Uhuru, this Asian family gets slaughtered. Um, the sort of language we used, right? And it was a language that didn't that did recognize them as human, right? In the same way as a community speaker would say, Dole, right? The whole idea of the Dole is those other people, right? Um, if you go to East, East, East South Africa, right? They call the other people Amakwe, 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 right? So when I, when, I, when I say anything about this question of racism, right? Um, I have to say we also practice, practice it here. We call, we call it a different name. Right? You know what I mean? Like, 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 I, don't, I don't feel like I need to sugarcoat what I'm saying right here. So, 
Well, the way I understand it for myself then is that uh, when I went to the US, it was like learning a second language. You know what I mean? Like, already, already, the language of uh, already I could speak the language of racism through uh, through being a koyo. And this was like the only, you know, and laughing at the Asian family getting slaughtered, right? It's, 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 so, <laughs> to make my plan, it was learned a second language, right? Though, of course, there are differences, right? But, 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 but yeah, I'll, I'll tell you two things. One is, okay, do you guys, do you guys, okay, do you guys, do you guys follow the case of uh, Thomas Tomon play, Tomon play, uh, Tomon play um, from, um, Nanaku, right? So, Chamonte, if you guys don't know the story, you should look it up as well, right? It's online, Chamonte. Anyway, he was, he, he, he was the grandson of Lord de la Mer, right? Lord de la Mer uh, was one of the architects of Kenyan uh, colonialism. Of course, you guys know de la Mer, right? Yeah, so, so, so the grandson. So, what happened was that uh, the grandson that um, you know, kill two, they kill two black Kenyans, right? He killed two Africans. One, one, the first one he killed, he just, you know, you know so Chamonte owned uh, 65,000 acres of land, which then are the other group of GXA, then are the Uhuru, the Uhuru Kenyatta family, they own that land now, they bought it, they, they bought it, they did it, they did it, they did it, but I mean, Chamonte then killed, um, yeah, I think this guy was just looking for game, looking for meat, you know, just looking for something to eat, right? In a, I think it was three, or he wasn't trying. Then he killed a game ranger, right? He killed a game ranger, so for this one he was tried, uh, and he ended up being in jail for uh, seven months or eight months, right? But, but, but in, 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 all, all this stuff, this, 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 this is what I'm telling you guys, you need to go back there, you have to have this longer memory and extended awareness. Anyway, when, when, so anyway, when, when the judge, when the judge was sentencing, when the judge was sentencing Delamere for, uh, sorry, John Monte for, for those eight months, uh, he said that, um, it, it, you know, that John Monte has learned his lesson, right? That John Monte has learned his lesson, he'll never do it again, and so on and so forth, right? Okay, now when you think about the US and I gave back to the question of racism, in the US you have to reward Martin. Right? You know, the, the, who, who then becomes like the uh, one of the symbols of the Black Lives Matter movement, right? So but the guy who killed him was white, right? You know, Zimmerman. Then one of the one of the jurors, one of the people in the jury was asked, you know, how they decided to I don't know, set him free, right? You know, because the Zimmerman wasn't, you know, it, it, he ended up um, being found not guilty, but not on the basis of standing your ground. But, in the, but, but, one, but one of the jurors, one of the jurors said that the reason why they set him on free was because he had learned like, his lesson. Right? <laughs> you, you, you see what I'm saying? But, but, yeah, so, so, so the question of racism, yes. So, so, so yeah, so, so the, the judge says, you know, that. Um, you know, that Chamonte would do it again, you know, he has learned his he has suffered and so on and so forth. Um, in the US they have a jura setting um uh so, 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 the kid of the whole magic free saying that he has learned his lesson like yeah. Anyway, all right. Um okay, well, 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 one last thought to, um there's a question about, about sports. Again, I would say uh, all our football players and so on and so forth. I, again, having such an awareness, you, you, you can't be. You got Muhammad Ali. You know, you guys want me, you know Muhammad Ali. Right? Muhammad Ali, the boxer, right? So, it, it becomes a voice of conscience. It becomes a voice of conscience, right? So, again, well, no matter what we're doing, we can take two parts, right? There are several, I suppose, but really two parts. One is to be on the side of the people. To be honest, to really, not even the same, really just to be human, right? We can just be human and, and, and then follow that way it takes us. So you could be a Muhammad Ali, or you could be, I don't know, you could become part of the, I don't know, the voice of oppression and so on and so forth. Thank you. Let's start for uh, uh, something, Sana. Now, um, we, we have a very active. Um, you know, hashtag online, hashtag Moraka Yumi talk, 
and we can keep up our conversations on Twitter and the other online platforms. Let's let this conversation not stop, stop, stop here. Let's carry it forward, discuss in the corridors of Moranga online and also in our classes, etc. At this point, I'd like to very graciously welcome uh, one of us, Frida Mokabi, to come and uh, move a lot of thanks. Yeah, but, 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 but can I say something, right? Every, I really want to express my gratitude, right? Because, you know, the, the, one, of my, one of my favorite blues songs, you know, says, um, you know, always give a thank you note, right? So I really, really want to express my gratitude for you guys having us here and for this conversation. Thank you very much. Do you want to the last word, Professor uh, Boyce? The last word? Final one, perhaps this statement or so. Right. My last word is such an um, overjoy just meeting Moranga people, Moranga University people. It's a joy meeting you. For many of us, it's like you, you have like a very surface engagement with coming to the continent, coming to Africa, where you may just stay and do the tourist things. But to actually come and be able to encounter young people, students, all of you working your way to being the brilliant people that you will be or are already in such a joy. And I wish you every success in every single thing that you try to do. And my motto is always give yourself the space to be brilliant. Give yourself the space to be brilliant. And if you keep that in mind, you won't be shy when you have to ask a question. You will do your best when you're in university, and you will also shine brighter when you go into your professional life. That anything you want to accomplish, that's the other thing you can. A lot of times, people your age think you're not going to make it, or it's hard, or whatever. But sometimes you have a detour, but if you have a goal, come back and go back to it, and finish it. And um, I had a friend who was in grad school with me in anthropology, and along the way, she decided she wanted to become a medical doctor. She was like already, you know, at the, at the graduate level. So she had to go back and take all the sciences needed for that, you know, in chemistry. And she was getting like C's and stuff. And she had to go get through medical school after that, get into medical school, get through medical school, and then after that, get internship. Well, she didn't finish until she was like 30 something years old. But she ended up making more money than I do. <laughs> so just no. <laughs> so that just a different, you know, you may have a dream and it may seem like a difficult thing, but eventually, if you really persevere, you will find a way that you will accomplish. So don't take any detour as a failure. The, you know, failure is often an example that you have to see how you can transcend as you go through life. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I go by the name Frida Kukami. I'm a fourth year student pursuing a Bachelor of Education degree. And uh, as we all know, in the African culture, it is our duty to give thanks always. So I take this opportunity to thank everyone who is here with us today for playing their roles in making this event a success. Because I'm not going to mention everyone, I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge just a few individuals. Our profound gratitude goes to our esteemed guests, Professor Mukoma Mbugi and Professor Karol Boyce for being with us here today. We are honored to have you here. To Professor Mukoma, I really appreciate your presence here. You are one of the leading literary figures on the continent and you really to greatness and we are really grateful. And to Professor Carol Boyce, we really appreciate that you came all the way from USA just to share with us some words of wisdom. And we really feel inspired, especially as a young black women. We really see a case, we have a role model, we have someone to look up to. And uh, you've taught us a few things. You've given us something you've talked about uh, in the last minutes. You've told us that you should give yourself space to be brilliant. Personally, I felt that that will motivate me in my daily activities. And as a black woman, 
obviously I know you've learned something from her. She's talked a lot, she's talked about the, the diaspora literacy, diaspora, she's talked about Pan African connections, she's also given us something to read. And uh, with that, we feel motivated. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I also want to thank Murana University of Technology for giving us this opportunity. And in particular, I want to thank our very own Dr. John Dabula, our Chair of Department, for organizing this event, together with other members of the department, and also our lecturers who are with me today. We have Dr. Nyesa, we have Dr. Chege, yes, he's not fair. we also have Dr. Bacho, and other lecturers who really appreciate your role in planning this event. Also, I want to thank Azaria and the, the entire of the media team. At least uh, your efforts online have been nothing short of amazing. Last but not least, I want to thank my fellow students for this event, at least for sacrificing your time. It's not something common, you know, if your us did come, at least you've given us the opportunity to come to listen to the brilliant man. You have learned our uh, thing or two, and I really appreciate your presence here. And uh, I'm really grateful. And with that, thank you all. May God bless you, and may God bless Murana University of Technology. Thank you, thank you. Please give her another round of applause.